Want to build WordPress websites safely on your own computer and then push them live in a matter of seconds? Or maybe you want to pull a live site back onto your computer for testing and making changes all without affecting the live website. Now in this video, I'll show you why local WP is one of my favorite tools, how to use its best features, and exactly how to move sites in both directions. So local to live and live to local. And I'll even show you how you can create live links so you can share what you're working on on your computer with your clients or colleagues, and it's all for free. Okay, so why local WP? Because there's a load of other ways that you can do this, okay? But the reason why I love this is that it's free, it works on Windows, Mac, and Linux, so no matter what operating system you're using or you're familiar with, this will work on it. It lets you build unlimited websites, so no matter how many sites you wanna build, you can just keep adding them into your local WP, and you can keep working on them. And it's a great safe playground for test websites or client websites that you're already working on, okay? And look, it's super simple to migrate once you're done, and you can do it in seconds, which I'll be showing you in a moment. Now, this beats working on a live client website, okay? The last thing you wanna do is working on a client website and then doing something that takes the website down, okay? I know some of you like to live dangerously, okay? But it's not recommended. If you're gonna become a WordPress developer and you wanna be professional, you need to have a staging website, and you can either do that through your host or this is a great solution because it's really quick and simple to do, and then you can migrate the website back once you've made the changes. Okay, so to get this tool, all you've got to do is head over to localwp.com, and you'll see here the number one local WordPress development tool, and you can either click download for free here, or you can click download in the top right-hand corner. And I will ask you some basic questions. So first of all, you need to tell it what sort of uh, operating system you're running on. So I've got a, a Mac Apple Silicon. Then just put some basic details in. Look, I know you know my name already, so I'll put that in. I'm gonna pick that I'm an agency, and I'm gonna put my work email address in here. Please don't email me. And then click Get It Now. And then this will download onto your computer. All right, so once you've installed Local and you've opened it up, you're gonna see something like this. And it's gonna say, it looks like you haven't created any sites yet. So let's get stuck in and create our first website. So just click this, create a new site. And you've got two options here. You've got to create a new site or you've got create from a blueprint. Now a blueprint is basically exactly what it says. It's like a template. It's like a starting point that you can save with like themes, plugins, setup, just to give you a head start every time. But we haven't got that. We'll cover that later on. But for now, we're going to be doing create a new site. So click that and click continue. Now, all you've got to do now is enter your site's name. So you can either give it a name. Generally, I put a URL in. So let's put localtest.com and you can see local has converted this URL into a, a local domain. So it's localtestcom.local because it uses the .local extension, okay? But don't worry about that. If you want to change the way it's being saved, you can, but I recommend just leaving it as default. Click continue. Now, at this stage, you can set your environment. Now, I recommend probably using the preferred option, which gives you PHP 8.2.7. Obviously, when you're watching this video, that might have changed, but it's using like up-to-date details and if you want, this is what's great about local, is if you know that your server where you're gonna be pushing the live site to eventually has got different setup to this, it might be a good idea to make some changes. So PHP version, let's say you know your server's running 8.3.8, .8, and you know that you're not using Nginx, you're using Apache, then you can match the environment to make sure that there's less frictional issues when you go live, okay? But for now, let's just go with preferred and click continue. Now, all you've got to do is set up your admin login username and password. So I'm going to put just some basic login details in. Don't bother putting an email address in because with local, it doesn't actually send emails externally. It sends them internally and it gives you a mailbox to check. So I'll be going through that in a moment as well. Now, some advanced options here. You can change the site language. So if you know that you want it in a different language, you can. So for me, I want English UK. It's not a multi-site. So I'll just click add site. Now, it takes a few moments to set it up. It doesn't take long, but just give it a few moments and then you'll see, you know, it'll ask for your password and then I'll speed this up as it downloads WordPress and installs WordPress and, um, and then, yeah, we'll see where we are. And there we go. I didn't even have to fast forward the video. It's installed WordPress in a matter of seconds and we're good to go. Okay, so now that we've got that installed, you'll see on the left-hand side that we've got this instance here called localtest.com and it's got this little green circle next to it and that's because it's running. Now, if the site's not running, you won't be able to access it, okay? So you can stop the site there, then nobody can access it, all right? But the key thing that we wanna check is to make sure that the website is working. So I can click open site and you can see it's taking me to a default install of WordPress. This is only running on my computer. Nobody else can access this. This is just for me. 
Now, if I want to access the admin, obviously you can go WP admin, but you can also click this WP admin, and then I can log in with the credentials that I set up earlier. And you can see I've now logged into my admin and I've got a clean install of WordPress where I can set up my theme, my plugins, everything that I want. I can build out the website here. It'll be super fast because it's not using any servers or you know web traffic or there's no latency. It is super fast, okay? And then once I'm ready, I can then upload it. So you can see now, you know, the WordPress install is done. We're not gonna talk about what to do with WordPress because that's a different video, but it's here, all right? So that's that. Now, let me just go through, through some of the killer settings here, all the options that I think that you need to be aware of. So you'll see each instance has got, um, you know, the URL at the top. Now, you've got the site folder. So when you click this, it'll open up the files where this website is. And it's always inside the app and then public instead of public HTML is here. And you've got your WordPress installation. So you could go to WP content, you go to plugins, and if you need to upload plugins in here, you can do it this way as well, all right? So that's how you access your site files. You've also got shell access and you can access uh, the files through VS Code. Um, you've got the overview here. So this is shows you, you know, your site domain, the SSL certificate, the web server that you're using. If you want to change it, you can. The PHP version, uh, the database that you're using. You've got one click admin. So as you saw with admin at the moment, you've got a, uh, you saw it two seconds ago. Let me just uh, show you. So if I want to go to WP admin, I need to log in. Okay. Now one click admin, if I enable this and I set it to my user, then when I go to WP Admin, it logs me straight in. I don't have to put the username and password in, okay? So that's what one-click admin is. You've got the WordPress version that's showing. Sometimes it'll, you know, say it's out of date and it needs updating. It tells you whether it's multi-site and you've got xdebug. Now, you can also, if you're a developer, get into the database and you can do this by using the admin Nero. So it's a bit like PHP My Admin, but it's just a local version. And if you need to make any changes in here, then you can. Obviously, be careful if you don't know what you're doing. And some tools are things like MailPit and Live Links, which we'll go through in a second. So MailPit, you need to be aware of this because if you're at this login page and you can't remember what your login was, then you can use the lost password here. You put your username in and what it's gonna do is, like any WordPress website, it'll send an email with a confirmation link. Now, like I said earlier, local doesn't send emails externally. So what you do is you'd go to open MailPit and you'll see that the email is here and it says, you know, someone's requested a password reset, blah, blah, blah. And then you can just click the reset link and that's where your emails will go, okay? Same for contact forms when you're developing, they'll go into this mail pit uh, account, all right? Now, the killer feature of this is this live links, okay? So live links lets you share your local website to people on the internet. Now, by default, localtest.com.local is not available to anybody online. It's only gonna work on this computer, all right? Now, to use live links, all you gotta do is you gotta log in first. You gotta create an account. So I've already got an account, so I'll click this here. So let me just log in. If you don't have an account, it's free to create one. So I'll log in. And once you're logged in, you'll see that your little picture will appear there so it knows that you're logged in. And live links here, look, it's off at the moment, but I can turn it on. And what it does, it creates a URL. So this creates um, a public URL. And you can see it's got nothing to do with local test common. It's created this URL, it's created a username, and it's created a password, all right? So if I wanna access this, I can copy that. Let's open up a incognito window. And you can see I'm getting presented with what's the username and password. So now I can share this website with a client or a colleague just by sending them this uh, URL. It gives you the details here, okay? So the username is rainbow and the password is orange. Sign in. And now this website is available online. Now, before you get too excited, don't start thinking, hey, cool, I don't need hosting anymore. It doesn't quite work like that because if, for example, I stop this website, then this website no longer becomes available. All right, you can see it can't find it. It's loading, loading, loading. So you know, your computer would have to be on all the time and your uh, site would need to be set to running. Otherwise, it's not gonna work. Also, a pre-warning, I've used this with clients and sometimes they feel like it's not very fast. So be careful when you're sharing it with colleague, uh, clients because if it's their first impression of the website, you don't want them thinking, oh, this is a bit slow because it's not using a, 
a genuine hosting server. It's using your computer, okay? So maybe pre-warn clients about that. So that is uh, an amazing feature that you've got here. Now, just some other things before we show you how to migrate websites. Now, on the left-hand side, you've got this connect, okay? So if you're using WP Engine or Flywheel as your host, then you can use this push and pull feature, which automatically will send the website back and forth from live to local, okay? So I'm gonna assume that you're not using that because that's why you're watching this video and you're using another host and I'll show you then how we can migrate websites. But you can connect your website to these hosts, all right? So blueprints, I'm not gonna cover this in great detail. This is where you can set up like a, a template, like a starting point. So let's say, you know, you always use a certain number of plugins and you always use the same theme. Then instead of having to set that up every single time, you can just use a blueprint and then once you install using that blueprint, you've just saved yourself some time, okay? So that's like a template. They do offer some add-ons. You know, I don't generally use these, but they show you what's available and what's installed. You've got some help docs here, and it's important that you're aware that, you know, the company that make this also make things like advanced custom fields and um, WP Migrate. So they use, they use, you know, there's plenty of tools that they use. You're in safe hands. It's a, it's a well-built uh, piece of kit. So let's talk about getting your websites migrated in both directions. All right, so in order to migrate the site that we've been working on, so let me just restart the server here. So let's start the server and you can see it's loading here. We're gonna get the green icon. So now we can go to our site and we can see that it's working, okay? So let me just cut it here and we'll put a website in place here that just imagine that you've been working on a website and you've created this website. Okay, so let's imagine this is our website. Okay, we've built this amazing website. Look, we're on the same URL and we now wanna put this live, okay? Now, there's a few ways you can do this, okay? But the way that I would recommend is you go to the admin. You can do that by clicking here. And then you can go to plugins and we wanna get a plugin called all-in-one migration. Now there's a few that I like using. I like using Duplicator primarily, but this is probably the easiest one because it allows you to overwrite the website that's in place. So let's install it. If you want me to do a video on how to update a website as opposed to completely overwrite it, let me know and in the comments below. And then what I'll do is I'll add that to my list of site uh, page uh, of, uh, of videos to make. So we've got the all-in-one migration plugin. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna export the site to and we're gonna create a file. So it's created that file, we're gonna download it onto our desktop and then we're, then we're done. Now, what I recommend you do then is obviously you need to go to your current host and you need to create up the environment that you're gonna use. So, you know, you'd go to the cPanel, you'd create an account and then, you know, you've gotta have a home ready on the live server that we've got that. So I've done that already. So I can go to my hosting. Now everyone's hosting is gonna be different, so I don't know what, how you access yours, but you wanna basically head over to your hosting and you wanna make sure that you've got a WordPress install set up there already, okay? So what I'll do is I'll create um, a new WordPress install so we've got a website running. Because what we want in this instance is to have WordPress ready uh, so we'll put this in a word in a directory called local okay so i'm going to put this you're probably going to put it in the root for yours but i'll put it in local okay and all of this is pretty irrelevant you need to have your user in it well you don't even need this because it's gonna uh overwrite it with the website that we've just created so we're just installing a fresh copy of wordpress on our server on our live server and you can just wait a second for it to run through this. So we can click no thanks. And the website that we just created is this one. So ruto.co.uk forward slash local. That's where I'm putting it just for this demonstration purposes, okay? So I can log into the admin and it's gonna do um, one click 
log in so I'm inside so as you can see here look just to show you this is a blank WordPress website this is the position you need to be on your host to do it this way all right yes there are other ways to do it but this is what I recommend that you do if you're not sure all right so install the same plugin on this website all in one migration install activate okay so once you've installed the file you can go to the all-in-one WP migration plugin and you want to click import and then from there you want to drag the file that you downloaded from the local site we'll just drop it in there wait for it to upload this might take a few seconds depending on your internet speed so preparing to import check in compatibility uh, importing the file will replace the content so make sure that you understand this that anything on this instance is going to get lost and we're going to move what we had from the local host onto here okay so I'm happy because this is a URL I know has nothing on it I'm going to click proceed so let it just do its thing the site has been imported successfully so I can click finish when I click the dashboard now when I go and visit this website now you can see the URL is router.co.uk forward slash local so this is now live I've moved my website from local to live and the whole world can see this now okay so that's how we move it one direction now if you want to move it the other direction you basically do exactly the same now some uh, common questions that I know are going to come up from this that I wanted to address to make sure that we cover it is overwriting versus migrating so most plugins will overwrite so the same that we've done here so you're going to lose anything on the live site if you move it from dev so any changes that you've made in the interim period might get lost so like I said if you want to know more about migrating as opposed to or merging as opposed to overwriting let me know below and we'll do a video about that because that's a bit of an advanced topic uh, another question that I've seen being asked on similar videos are um, plugin licenses, like how do plugin licenses work on local? So generally speaking, the developers of the plugins count license numbers by the live sites. So it should work on your local site. If you have any problems, reach out to the plugin developers and explain to them that you're only using it on local and it should be fine. You shouldn't have any problems. I've not experienced issues with that and then the other one is like multi-site I haven't covered multi-site in this it's not something that I generally use if it's something that you want to know more about let me know in the comments below and yeah we'll you know be more than happy to try and you know cover that topic so that's it now you understand how local WP works why it's so awesome all the powerful tools it does and yeah I would just you know give me some feedback below if you found this video useful make sure you like it subscribe if you want more videos like this and yeah i'm happy to provide any sort of wordpress tutorials that you're going to need so yeah see you on the next one